In this video, we learn different type of compilation, such as separable compilation and flattening about their application. Separable compilation proposed by Google researcher with the name of MobileNet, efficient compilation and neural network for mobile vision application. Here, the motivation is to make compilation computationally more efficient. We can divide the current uh, separable convolution into a spatially separable convolution and depth-wise separable convolution. Here the idea is to separate one convolution into two in order to make the computation faster. And the spatial separable convolution is so named because it deals primarily with the spatial dimension of image and kernel, the width and the height. The spatial separable convolution simply divides the kernel into two smaller kernels. The sobel uh, kernel from the previous lecture here, we have the kernel with the size of 3 in 3, and the idea is to separate it into 3 in 1 and also 1 in 3 kernel. Well, as you can see here, we like uh, uh, split the sobel printer into two kernels. If we apply 3 in 3 dimensional kernel or 1 time 3 in 1 and 1 time 1 in 3, I mean convolving in both filters subsequences has a similar uh, effect. But by doing in the second way, doing in the two different kernel, a smaller kernel, we reduce the amount of the parameter to be a store and therefore we improve the speed. Like by moving a subtle filter on the top of uh, our input, we need, uh, we need to learn nine parameters here if they are, for example, weight. And by moving these to a small kernel, we need to in total learn six parameters, which is smaller. And therefore, we are faster. Consider having a, a, like an input image with a size of 5 in 5 and also a kernel size of 3. And when our stride is 1, we do not have any padding. By moving uh, the kernel on a sp different a special location, in total, we have 9 positions. Uh, where at each 9 position, we do the 9, time, nine uh, element wise multiplication. Therefore, in total, we have 81 multiplication. However, with the same situation, if we split the kernel of 3 in 3 into 3 in 1 and move it one time on the top of our uh, 5 in 5 into, uh, then we need 45 uh, multiplication. And uh, here is also our intermediate output, which is 3 in 6. And now by moving a kernel with a size of 1 in 3 on the top of intermediate output, we need 27 multiplication in order to create the output. I mean, the output size is still is the similar to our previous uh, operation, but here we need less uh, multiplication. The main issue with special separable convolution is that not all kernels can be separated into two smaller kernels. And this becomes particularly bothersome during training since of all the possible kernels the network could have adopted. And it can only end up by using the tiny portion and also like it introduced a, a limit in searching for all possible kernel in training space. Therefore, we need another type of the separable convolution, namely depth-wise convolution. Unlike a special separable convolution, depth-wise separable convolutions work with kernels that cannot be factored into two smaller kernels. Therefore, it is more commonly used in the deep learning, and this is the type of separable convolution which you see in a cross, uh, for example, uh, cross for TensorFlow. Uh, if you search at tf that uh, layers that separable comes to the uh, I mean, uh, this is the depth-wise uh, uh, separable convolution. The depth-wise separable convolution is so named because it deals uh, not just with the spatial dimension, but with the depth dimension as well. I mean, they also deal with the number of the channel as well. It has uh, two states, a stage of the depth-wise and also point-wise. 
This figure compares the number of multiplications done in a standard CNN versus depth-wise CNN. Having a colorful images with a depth of uh, 3 and size of 7 in 7 kernel size of 3, then uh, we will have we will have the output with a size of 5 in 5. In a standard CNN, by moving our kernel to the different spatial location, indeed, we need to do like 7 times 7 times 3, uh, which is like our uh, input, and also like 3 times 3 times 3, which is our kernel, and we have like uh, not only one kernel, we have 128 kernels, and therefore, uh, 120 times in total is like the number of multiplication that we have in a standard CNN. However, in depth wise uh, CNN, uh, the story is uh, quite different. Note that here, this is not a matrix multiplication. We are not multiplying the whole image by the kernel but moving the kernel through every part of image and multiplying a small part of it separately. Well, for example, in this example, having a, a colorful images with a depth of 3 in 7 in 7, uh, and by moving a kernel, here we indeed convert the um, like output feature map is like 5 in 5 in 3. Now, in second stage, we need to increase the number of channels of each image. The point-wise convolution is also so named because it uses a one-in-one -one kernel or a kernel that iterates through every single point. Note, this kernel has a depth of however many channels the input image has. For example, in our case, it is three. Therefore, we need to iterate one in one in three kernels through our uh, output uh, intermediate output feature map, which is five in five in three. Then we can create five in five in one, and then we have also create 120 eight times one in one in one three kernel, which the actually uh, is the output with the size of five in uh, five. In 128. And here we compare the number of multiplication in a depth by separable CNN and a standard CNN. Having a kernel size of 3 in a, like a colorful images with a depth of 3 and moving this on a like a top of 5 in 5 input and having 128 kernel, in total we need 86,400 uh, multiplication but for uh, a standard CNN. But in depth by CNN, uh, we do like uh, quite differently. First, we calculate the uh, depth wise uh, or first stage of the uh, separable convolution. Here, as uh, we mentioned earlier, we need to calculate for each channel one time. Therefore, we have three uh, times uh, three uh, times one. And by moving five times in five times and having three kernel, in total we have uh, 675 multiplication. And in the second stage pointwise uh, convolution, we do it in the pointwise in a one in one with the number of the depths. Here the depth is three. And by moving five times in one time and having 128 kernels, then we have 9,600 multiplication in total. And by summing up these two stages, we have in total 10,275, which is like eight times less than a standard convolution. That means like, okay, it is somehow faster. And going deeper, having more kernel, for example, in these examples, and by having a, like a larger kernel, like 256, these numbers for the standard CNN is a, a million two hundred twenty eight thousand eight hundred. But uh, this, uh, I mean, the number of the multiplication for the uh, depth by separable convolution is like uh, fifty three thousand only. Here is also in this slide and next slide, again, we explain uh, how does the uh, depth-wise separable convolution works. 
at the first stage is depth-wise, we perform kernel on a depth of our input channel, then uh, we do in polling. For example, having uh, like a kernel size of 3 in 3 and input size of 6 in 6, with uh, like 16 channels, indeed we need to do like 16 times 3 times 3, which we take the number of kernel equal to the uh, number of our channel and each kernel having a depth of one. Then this kernel is convolved over the associated channel separately and then we have like 16 features max. And then uh, stacking all these feature now we will have the output with the size of uh, 4 in 4 and also depth of 16 channels. Then as a second stage, like we perform the point-wise uh, convolution. Well, here we perform indeed like a 1D convolution where we perform the convolution uh, at each single point separately. But note that the number of filter is equal to the number of channels uh, which we got from the intermediate output. By doing this, indeed, we get the output of the depth-wise convolution, which is much faster than normal uh, CNN operation. Flattening is also another type of convolutional layer. Here, by flattening, we convert the data into a one-dimensional array for inputting it to the next layer. We flatten the output of convolutional layer to create a single one feature map. As you can see here, the, these are the output feature map from previous layer, and we flatten it to in order to actually having a, a single one feature map, and it is connected with the final classification model, which we call it fully connected layer. Here is the references used in this uh, main part. Thank you for your attention.